Hello friends, today let's solve optimal account balancing problems. We are given transactions and uh, a transaction will be given as a tuple x, y, z. That means x gave y, z dollars. So for this example, that means 0 gave 1 10 dollars, 2 gave 0 5 dollars. And uh, our task is to see how many transactions we need to make so that all the people are settled up. Let's write the graph. That means 0 gave 1 $10, 2 gave 0 $5. So in total, 0 should uh, give out $5. And it, he should be paid five dollars to be set up for the one uh, he was given ten dollars so she should uh, he should pay ten dollars to be set up and for the two he were uh, he gave out five dollars so he should be paid five dollars to be set up so you will find that uh, all the to be paid, if we sum up, it should be the sum of all the numbers should pay. 5 plus 5 equal to 10. So how do, how can we make the transactions? We can let 1 pay 5 to 0 and 1 pay 5 to 2, right? Like this. So the result should be two transactions. Let's see another example. Zero paid one ten dollars and one paid zero one dollar and one paid two five dollars and two paid zero five dollars. Uh, as before, we should uh, sum up all the. Um, we should calculate its balance for the zero. In total, he paid $10 and uh, he received $6. So actually, it just equals he paid $4. So uh, in order to be settled up, he should be paid $4. In the same way, we calculate that one should pay $4 because he received Four dollars more, and for the two, he was received. Uh, he received five dollars, and he paid five dollars. So in total, he already set up. So we do not need to do any transactions for this person. In the end, we just need to let one pay zero four dollars, and all the people are set up. So the result is just one. We only needed to do one transaction. So you will see how do we get the number of the transactions. First, we will calculate the balance of each account, right? And the transaction is actually a two-way relationship. What does that mean? When we calculate the tuple zero paid one ten dollars, that means zero should be paid ten dollars to be settled up. And for one, he should pay others ten dollars to be set up. So one transaction actually means two changes for both the, you know, the first people and the second people. So in this way, when we iterate all the transactions, we can get the balance for each account. And how to, you know, record the balance for each account? We can use a hash table. Right, the key just means a count, and the balance means it's balance. You know, the value means the balance, right? And what's the next? Actually, you see in this example, this two is already settled, so we do not need to count it in in the next steps. So we only need to get all the values in the hash table that. Is not equal to zero 
and we can use a list to save all the balance that are not zero. Okay, how about next? Let's see this example. And we use the same method before. We can calculate that zero should be paid two dollars to be set up, and one should be paid two dollars to be set up, and two should pay three dollars. To be set up, so actually we can use a negative three to represent, because when it should be paid, that means she total balance should be, you know, should be added, and when it should pay others the dollars, actually his total balance should be minus, right? Should be minus. And let's see a alternative way to settle all the people up. As three should pay others two dollars, so he can pay one dollars to four to let four be settled up, and he left one dollar, and he can pay that to one, and then two should pay three dollars to others, so he can pay the one to the one one dollar to one to let one be settled up, and he left two dollars, he can pay that. To zero, so all the people are settled up. But you will see, in total, it's four transactions. This is not optimal. You see, this is optimal, right? You can let uh, three pay two dollars to one, because two have two dollars, a uh, three have two dollars, and one um, has, should be paid two dollars. So actually, we can let three pay. Is two dollars to one, so it's just one transaction. And for the two, he can pay two dollars to zero, and he can pay another one dollar to four. So all the people are settled, and uh, in total there are only three transactions. This is optimal. So you will find that we will try to let this transaction happen. That means one person, like uh, his balance is negative. And the nine person, his balance is positive, and if their balance sum up equal to zero, it should be an optimal method, right? This is the thing you should uh, notice. So let's see. Actually, the algorithm just uh, we start from the first value. Actually, you recall that we have a list to save all the values that are not equal to zero, right? And we try to set up with the rest of Values, and we compare all possible assignment. Like this is a possible assignment. This is another possible assignment, and get a global minimum number of the transactions. Uh, this is a pooling. Once the current balance plus the next balance equal to zero, it should be an optimal assignment. So we can end early. What does that mean? It just like uh, here. This is negative two, and this is positive two. So we can assign this two. It should be the optimal. If we split these three up, right? We assign this one to four and the one dollar to one. It should not be optimal. This is thing you should notice. And only when the current balance times the next balance is less than zero, we could set up. What does that mean? Like zero should be paid two, and one should be paid two. They are all positive. So if we let zero give money to one, that means it will just add more transactions, because zero should be paid two. Now you let zero pay two, mon uh, two dollars to one. That just add the more transactions because zero should be paid. Four dollars, and it already cost one dollar, uh, one transaction to pay two dollars to one. So only when the, you know, this balance times this balance are less than zero, we can use a transaction to try to make them set up. This is the thing. Okay, wrap up. We first uh, do some. Pre-processing to get uh, the balance of each account, and then we will do the backtracking 
to get the global minimum number of the transactions. And just something you need to notice that only the, the current balance times next balance less than zero, we can perform one transaction. And we can always end early if current balance plus the next balance equal to zero. It is the optimal assignment. Okay, you understand that. So now let's write the code. First thing first, we need a hash table. The key and value should all, uh, should, uh, all be the integer, the new hash map. And then we iterate the transactions. Transactions. And uh, we put uh, T0, right? And the map get or default. Default, that will be T0. And if we haven't seen it before, it should be zero. And as you see, zero paid $10 to one. So to be set up, he should be paid $10. So she should add this T2 to be settled. And we put T1 and uh, map get all default. That will be T1 zero minus t2 what does that mean that means one he received ten dollars and to be settled up he should pay other people ten dollars so we sh he should minus this number t2 and now we will try to get the values that are not equal to zero so we use a list and uh, we will see for all the value in the map dot values, mm, sorry. Okay, if v not equal to zero, list will add this v. Okay, now we get all the values. And then we will call a def search. We will know the first, uh, you know, the current index is zero, and we will also pass the list. And now let's write this dfs function. This is a k, means the index in the list. Okay, this is a list. Let's see the base case. Once the k equal to the list dot size, we do not need uh, any transactions more, so we return zero. And uh, now we can get a current balance that will be list get k. The same thing if this curve equal to zero. That means we can just uh, skip current, uh, you know, skip current value. So that will be k plus one list. We do not need to add another transaction. Otherwise, we can try to get the global minimum. So initially, we can let it equal to integer max value. And for the, you know, I start from k plus one, I less than list dot size, i plus plus. We get the next uh, balance should be list get i right, and as I said before, and I said before, only when the current balance times next balance less than zero, we can make a transaction. And the minimum we try to get the minimum, the be oh sorry minimum of the minimum, and uh, if we do transaction, actually we add one transactions, and we try to do the next you know try to set up a next account so there should be k plus one and list uh, but do not forget to update this this value so list set this i that will be curve plus next and if we unchoose this I we will reset it to the I that will be next. And then we can end early if this curve plus next equal to zero. We can just break. This is already optimal. Finally, we return this minimum. Okay, thank you for watching. See you next time.